And now, Ham Radio Concepts presents another exciting amateur radio video, keeping ham radio operators informed with a thorough look at the new products. Now, here's your host, Eric, KJ4YZI. Hey folks, Eric with Ham Radio Concepts, and I want to make a video of a product with a little bit of fun fact attached to it. Um, this is the MFJ148RC. This is a radio control clock by MFJ. They have several of them, but let me tell you why I picked this up. The other day, about two weeks ago, uh, I was volunteered to do the D-Star net. So they said, hey, we need net control tonight. Nobody's going to do it. I said, not a problem. Uh, let me fill my beer and uh, grab a smoke real quick and, and I'll get to it. Well, that was 833. And my clock in the living room said 810. And the wife had told me it's not the battery. I changed the battery. The clock is not right. It's losing time. So I jump into the net at 841. They're like, what happened? We just talked to you. Well, you know, you took another 10 minutes before you got on the net. So I decided, you know what I don't have is uh, what they call it, an atomic clock or a radio controlled clock. So this would be called a radio control clock. A lot of people call it atomic clocks. So there's a difference, and I'll explain that in a second. But uh, we'll go over the clock real quick. It's not just a clock. It does show UTC and local time in 12 and 24 hour formats. It does have a nicely backlit light so you can see it in the dark, okay, by pushing the button up top. It does have a 10 minute LED or a 10 minute uh, timer, ID timer with a little LED here and a beeper so that when you push it, you know you have, when it goes off at 10 minutes, you can ID. Now, a lot of people using uh, HF contesting, stuff like that, they prefer to have a clock that shows UTC because UTC is the global universal coordinated time or Greenwich mean time, which is the prime meridian that runs right through Greenwich, England, which would be uh, zero, which would, would represent uh, plus Greenwich mean time would be the day ahead and minus would be, you know, before midnight. So the following. So uh, a lot of people want this because in Greenwich mean time or Zulu time, as this would be on the right, uh, at 2,354 hours, it's, 2,354 hours. If everybody said the contest starts at 2,200 UTC, well, that's not, you don't have to calculate which time zone you're in or what time it will be at your time zone. It's UTC. So, uh, local and UTC in 24 hour or 12 hours. So, you'll see up on the top here, I do have uh, little time zones on both sides. So, you can set them with the buttons on the back. I can set the time zone of each side. Daylight savings time. So right now we're in daylight savings time on the eastern coast of East Coast of the United States. So I'm negative four hours from UTC. Uh, if I was in California, I could set this to uh, Pacific Standard Time, and it would calculate the difference uh, where I'm at versus UTC. Um, you'll notice that both the clocks are going at the same time because they're both using the same time base, and the little signal bars here represent that it has. Uh, sy uh, synchronized with the uh, global atomic clock in Fort Collins, Colorado. And that's what I want to tell you with the fun fact. But um, So it can be wall mounted. It can, uh, with the stand here, it can be uh, stood on your desk. A great thing to have. Any ham should have a radio controlled clock because you don't need to set it. You have the ability to set it manually if you're not able to receive the signal from Fort Collins, Colorado. Um, what I found, first of all, you want to make sure you have your receive button up uh, to on. And when you first turn this on, um, oops, push the button there. When you first turn this on, you want to make sure that uh, it runs for a little while. Certain radio control clocks have different receivers and they check more often than not or than others. Um, this took a, a several hours to sync up. It syncs up on one side than the other. Not a big deal, but once it syncs up every few hours during the day, uh, it's going to check to make sure that it's in sync with the U.S. atomic clock in Fort Collins, Colorado. About this clock um, in Colorado, and that would be with the, the uh, call letters WWVB. And WWVB is, again, in Colorado, and this is what they consider the U.S. official U.S. time because it's the most accurate clock in the world. Uh, this clock... Uh, runs 
24-7 and puts out a signal uh, recently upgraded from, I think, 27,000 watts to 50,000 watts at low frequency. Not HF, not mid-frequency or medium frequency, but low frequency at a frequency of 60 kilohertz. That's so low, I'll put it this way, uh, what's the lowest AM broadcast, 510? Uh, 60 kilohertz is so low, that's below 2,200 meters. That's a low band. And these radio controlled clocks have a radio receiver in them that receives that signal. So that signal is so low, and it's there's not hardly any bandwidth there, that it sends the time from Fort Collins, Colorado, to these devices as bits of information. And typically a bit is like on or off, binary, one or zero. Uh, and it sends 60 of those, so it takes a, roughly a full minute of good signal for the code, for the, the clock to decode the signal generated by Fort Collins, Colorado, telling you what the time is. So certain parts of the, the day with that band uh, in the United States and parts of Canada and Mexico will not receive this signal, primarily on the East Coast. Um, there's a uh, chart online. I'll pop it here on the screen maybe in a second, and I'll show you. The coverage uh, of this thing really works better um, with the band from, uh, say, 8 o'clock at night. Um, all the way through the evening or, or early morning hours. Um, so roughly somewhere around midnight in the U.S. Uh, but anyways, so it's putting out the signal, the clock is decoding it, and once it gets the signal, it updates the clocks automatically. And there are several, many different radio, uh, radio clocks out there. There's analog ones. We have one at work in the shop. The arm, once in a while, uh, will automatically set itself. You know, you can if you if you catch it at the right time, the thing will will move if it goes slow. Because not every not any clock is absolutely perfect in the world. A true atomic clock is run with uh, atomic oscillator inside, like cesium or rubidium. Um, something like this is using, I guess, a crystal or circuitry. You know, utilizing a crystal to keep it on time, but. Every so often, you may be off a half a fraction of a second, and then this thing has to update. You put that together over a matter of six months, you may be 10 minutes off. So if you're into contesting uh, or uh, logging your contests um, or even in aeronautics or anything else, a lot of people use UTC, and it's, it's very good to have. They even make uh, – MFJ even makes um, uh, watches. I'm going to pick up one of those watches. That would be great to have on field day when you're – you know, because everybody lives by their cell phone. Nobody has a clock that will run, uh, you know, without looking at their clock. It's just the way it's happening in 2016. I've never been a watch person, but I'd love to have a, uh, a radio-controlled watch that would keep time. So uh, the clock is, you know, uh, very handy in the shack with the, with the light and stuff like that. Uh, LED backlit display. Keeps on time. Takes two AA batteries. That'll run for a couple years on two AA batteries. Um, I was trying to talk enough to where the ID timer goes off so you can hear it. But right now it is at midnight at UTC, okay? Zero hours. Um, and you'll see here I'm four hours behind. So uh, let me show you real quick. Now also if, if you're on HF and you go to uh, – let me put this on the screen real quick. And you can actually hear this atomic clock on HF on various HF frequencies here, 2.5 megahertz. 5 megahertz, 10 megahertz, 15 megahertz, 20 megahertz from Fort Collins, Colorado, and some other stations, uh, different parts of, of uh, the world here. So you can hear it. So let's say you don't have a radio control clock or you're just interested to see what it sounds like. I'm going to show you a clip. But if you want to manually sync your computer or software or clock to the up-to-second UTC time, for operating, say, JT65, everybody has to be on the same second of universal coordinated time for transmitting and receiving accurately. Um, JT65, I've never worked, but I've seen it, and it's uh, it's pretty. It's got to be pretty accurate. Uh, so here's a clip. This was taken offline, uh, 10 megahertz. This is what it sounds like at the atomic clock in Colorado. All right, and that clock's going 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and you could hear it. Uh, if I had my HF, I would pull it up and show you, but this was on an online clip.
but it's it's also transmitting. That's not the same frequency or, or signal going to the radio control clocks. So the radio control clock again is 60 kilohertz. Uh, here's a map that I was telling you about. You'll see different parts of the time, uh, different time of the day, shows you different band uh, airwaves for the 60 kilohertz signal. For instance, 2200 UTC. You'll notice that my part of uh, Florida on the East Coast and some of the East Coast up here can't receive that signal or or is very on the on the very fringe. But say uh, six, uh, 0600 UTC, here is, look at this, blanketing the U.S., some parts of Canada, all of Mexico, barely to Hawaii, and some parts of South America are receiving this signal for uh, the clocks. So it, it might be that at certain parts of the day you're not receiving a signal, and that's fine. That's just how propagation works at that frequency. Uh, this looking like it's the worst here at, uh, what time was that? Zero hundred hours. Uh, not even in, in range here. But at some point, the clock is going to sync up a couple times a day and make sure that it is totally accurate to UTC time. I hope this made some sense to you, was some sort of a fun fact you enjoyed. Check us out on Facebook.com slash Ham Radio Concepts. I need some likes and shares to your buddies and friends. Ham Radio Concepts on YouTube. Make sure you subscribe. I got a bunch of stuff on the way, especially Field Day, Dayton, Ohio, and some other stuff. And... Coming soon, hamradioconcepts.com. Haven't started that yet, but I have the domain. 73 from KJ4YZI. This has been another exciting amateur radio video presented by Ham Radio Concepts. Subscribe today on YouTube. Search Ham Radio Concepts, all one word.